Very good morning to everyone. My name is Tio Sei. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for, for being here today. And we are honored to have Dr. Shankai Durakana for this tech talk on era of disruptive engineering and technology. Dr. Shankar is a chartered engineer who has more than 20 years of teaching and research experience. He has gotten his degree in electronics and communication engineering, MTech degree in laser and electro optical engineering, and his PhD in communication and networks engineering. And today, he will be sharing with us his point of view about the era of disruptive engineering and technology and how it has affected today's world. Without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Shankar to start the talk. Dr. Shankar? Hi. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you can hear me. Let me share my screen and start. go ahead with my talk. Basically, it's good morning. All right. So it's too hot today. So I say good afternoon. All right. So today my talk will be on the era of disruptive engineering and technology. When I call this as an era of disruptive engineering technology, this is an initiative that has started with the initiative of 4G, fourth generation mobile communication, alongside with fourth generation mobile communication. And it has been progressive all these years. And the mobile communication is closely associated with disruptive engineering as well. So this is not an initiative which is, which is yet to start, or which is uh, what you call a, a recent initiative in, in, during the time of pandemic, but an initiative which has started 10 years ago. ago. And um, basically, it has picked up its momentum. And this initiative is the one which will be mostly in research phase and development phase until 2030. And from 2030, we see the commercialization or adoption of these initiatives whatever we talk about as disruptive in engineering initiatives in real life from 2030. So the technologies which I'm going to talk today are the technologies which were and which will be in a very high demand in terms of research and development for the next six to seven years, development and testing. And from 2030, these technologies will be more on a commercial deployment and the return of for at least for the next 10 years, the technology will be on deployment for the sake of return of investment of the technologies. So the technologies which we are going to talk about is the technology initiative of the past towards the future. All right. right. So the pandemic has taught us a lot of lesson always these days for the past two years everyone starts their webinar with pandemic but my webinar is also starting with that but with a positive note on it okay a uh, great reset is basically an initiative that has been started by in 2020 by the world economic forum it is as the Davos agenda in 2020 and it was initiated by Prince Charles in 2020 and then a group of world leaders and as well as the topmost corporate owners on the topmost industrial revolutionists okay. all right so they wanted to rebuild or to give a great reset to the whole world such that 
there is a very high stimulated development in social and economic values and the global reset is all about putting human as the priority the world is created for human and it is putting human as the priority the human integrity and the human dignity was valued as a entity of economic status and which has led to a pathetic uh, results due to or which has been highly disruptive in the dignity of human life because of this pandemic so to have a dignified life or to have a dignified social reformation which is bit an independent of economic this full of great minds great works have joined together the great leaders of the world have joined together to discuss on coming out with a systematic solution for a dignified human life on the planet so whenever i say the word systematic solution obviously there comes a solution which is completely engineered so when i say a systematic solution it is going to be an engineered solution which will have a high reliability high repeatability the solutions and high efficiency so that's what we call as the performance criteria of systematic solutions so the global leaders are looking at a very systematic solutions for the social economical and environmental developments so that's what for great reset uh, for further information you can go into world economic forum i put this gentleman here because he is the one who started the world economic forum and the 50th economic forum happened in 2020 and it which came out where they came out with the idea of grace great reset and in 2021 that had, the initiative has got a momentum a lot of countries like us have already started working on the great great reset initiatives so it's all about reforming and reflecting the lesson learned during the pandemic or taking the opportunity of the greatest disaster of this era to reflect reimagine and reset our world to be more sustainable in terms of economic social and environmental conditions such that the human will have a very dignified life in this world okay even that was not dignified in the past 2 years people were on exodus we see a lot of people walking on the roads dying on the roads while walking even that was not dignified in the past 2 years so that has led to the great reset thinking and again this great reset thinking is not something a new initiative it is an initiative towards the attainment of sustainable development goals 2030 which was formulated by united nations in 2014 so as i said whatever technology engineering we talk today is fueled or is towards the attainment of the sustainable development goal which was formulated in 2014 we had a good progress every country has to report the progress every one year or two year we had a good progress on this sustainable development goals until 2019 and all the hiccups were based towards the progress of the sustainable development goals until 2019 but unfortunately the progress was challenged or stranded by the pandemic for example we were progressing towards no poverty and zero hunger uh, very uh, was was a good progress basically there was around 1.3 billion people in 1990s in extreme poverty so the measure of extreme poverty is 1 dollar per person Okay, to meet it 
its basic needs in 1990s and now it is 1.25 dollars per person to meet its basic needs so if you have 1.25 dollars per day a person has a 1.25 dollars per day he is no more in extreme poverty okay so no poverty is towards eradication of extreme poverty uh, not only that but the main objective is also that eradication of extreme poverty it was progressing and there were around 600 million and they, it was clustered around two regions which was more of a rural based regions rather than a very urbanized area so it was more of a rural based regions uh, mostly on india or southeast asia and the african areas and if you go go more in detail it, uh, the people who were on extreme poverty were more narrowed down to uh, two different countries india and nigeria and they were progressing towards eradication of extreme poverty but unfortunately in this past two years around 900 million people have pushed back to extreme poverty so which means that we have gone back 10 years in extreme poverty so there was a progress of 10 years we moved from 1.3 billion to uh, around 600 million and it was reducing drastically this extreme poverty was reducing drastically there were there were a lot of measures taken by the government the, uh, the poverty was reduced drastically but unfortunately this pandemic has pushed back 10 years the poverty extreme poverty to the status of back to the status of 10 years now around 700 million people have been pushed this is a data given by worldvision.org okay who is uh, again an an ngo so this poverty is one which talks about the dignified life so the global reset or the great reset is about having a dignified life for human or a dignified social life across the globe for every individual existing in this world so it is all about mobilizing global leaders bringing the top one or ten percent of the business owners or the people look who own the top one or ten percent of the world wealth and businesses to take care of the bottom 50 percent of the people so that everybody will have a very dignified social life so again the global reset is towards attainment of sustainable development goal 2030 in a more inclusive way so it is all about global leaders joining together uh, to come out with a very inclusive agenda to to ele to elevate everything alleviate every conflict that exists between the leaders across the globe between the countries so that you have a sustainable development goal attained or the purpose of this sdg is attained all right so we have seen this happening in terms of vaccination all right so you can see that the global solution is vaccination is one of the global solutions and all the countries are working towards getting the whole world vaccinated there are countries which are at a good economy which holds almost 30 percent of the economy and countries which holds 20 percent of the economy the world wealth and there are countries which do not even hold the wealth of one single individual richest billionaire All right so top 10 billionaires so there was a sharing of the vaccines globally and it was still maintained to be an equal distribution of vaccination across the global population so it has almost like it's not said but it has made as a mandate that every individual human has the right 
to get himself vaccinated against this COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so therefore you can see that the initiative has already been happening, and there is a reduction in the inequalities across the global community of people, right? Irrespective of the economical status of the, the country. So we are moving in that direction for while finding the solution for the pandemic itself. So the Global Reset Initiative is now not a myth. It is now not uh, what somebody called it as a conspiracy theory, but it is the fact that is happening. All right. So what best can be done to attain the sustainable development goals? For example, uh, quality education, no poverty, zero hunger, good health, all these are interrelated. When I look at uh, the first four itself, they are interrelated. All the sustainable development goals are one or other way it is interrelated. When you have a good infrastructure, good people move, urbanization happens because people go in looking of a good standard of living, right? A sustainable city and a community development is required. So this good infrastructure ensures good health and good well-being and good quality education, okay? People move from rural areas to urban areas. Urbanization has happened more drastically in the past 10 years compared to the 19th century or right in this century compared to the past centuries basically especially in the past 10 to 20 years okay more than 60 percent of the population are now living in cities or the population density of the cities is very high all right so when we are talking about uh, good health and well-being it is tied up with sustainable cities and communities it is tied up with good infrastructure, providing a good industry, innovation and infrastructure, decent work and economic growth. So quality, affordable quality education or all of these sustainable development goals are interrelated. Right? So they are not going to be uh, a standalone entity. They are going to be interrelated. All right. When coming to, for instance, when coming to no poverty or reduction of uh, hunger or having a zero hunger okay every one of us are aware that there exist people of need and every one of us have a heart of charity that's what i've seen commonly across people when you walk by when you see a people of need you try to help them and walk because you are also committed to your life okay most of us do not involve in charity much maybe because of lack of time or maybe because of we do not know how to do it and where to do it and the trustworthiness of the charitable act done by organizations is not explicit it is not transparent sometimes so these are the questions that is in our mind i wanted to help but i don't know how to help what to do what the way to help other generations or, or the people of the society around me. All right. So most of the time, the lack of time and the lack of knowledge of how to do it is the one which does not help us to uh, to serve the society. Even we have the heart of serving actually. Okay. No individual is an independent entity, but everything is connected in this world. Okay. So when we look at it, the transfer of information and the authentication of the information and the transparency of the information at the same time the security of the information is more needed okay the information has to be exchanged the information has to be securely exchanged the information has to be transparent and the trustworthiness of the information has to be enabled so that the leaders of the, not only the leaders of the globe work together, but every individual work together or in synchronization with each other to attain this sustainable development goal. So attainment of this sustainable development goal is not only a part of 
the governments is not only the part of an organization, but it is the responsibility of every single individual who exists in the world. Okay, and it is the responsibility of the human being to take care of the world he lives and to preserve the goodness of the world for the generations to come and not only for people but for every life that exists in the world so for this responsibility to be shouldered right it will be an additional burden on me if i am going to sit and look at information and everything okay so the information related to every responsibility of the sustainable development goal has to be made available transparently and the authenticity and the security of the information has to be maintained right and also so which we which leads to a world which is to be data driven okay so a data driven world is the one which can lead to the attainment of sustainable development goal okay a data available to everyone and if the data is available to everyone obviously the data might be on the good hands or it might be on the bad hands right so data is made available to everyone the transparency and the authenticity of the data has to be there at the same time the data security has to be ensured so now everything depends on the data attainment of the sustainable development goal depends on the data so we have felt that actually if I'm going to tell that education or anything is going to be independent of time and space, before two years, people might not have agreed it. People might not have believed it. Okay. We engineers talk about X as a function of time and space always, right? Not only engineers. If you look at every individual activities or every individual entity, which you are trying to evaluate, analyze, build, or uh, understand, right? Anything, it is understood as a function of two things, time and space. It is executed as a function of two things, time and space. It is, right, analyzed and evaluated as a function of time and space. Every entity is, was time and space dependent, okay? But, we are moving into a world where X is a function independent of time and space. Okay. X can be any entity. Okay. I'm not talking about the fundamental science. Let me talk about uh, more in general about X is will be a service. Let us take X as a service. The service independent of time and space. For example, let us talk about education for your graduation few years ago we were supposed to go to your place to a space to get yourself graduated and you were supposed to go through a time timeline of uh, your education process a time-based education process such that you go through your graduation but today your education is made independent of the space. You can learn, you can graduate from anywhere across the globe. Okay. I'm not talking about uh, space dependence as a physical presence. It is something like we are moving into virtual reality. Okay. So X becomes independent of space. Your education, you can get it. When I talk about education, knowledge. your knowledge, you can get it from anywhere across the world from anybody across the world okay for example i see learning is now more happening through watching youtube videos through webinars through seminars through online courses short term courses so where you don't even know who is the provider right you reach out when it is required for you okay when i want to learn something i reach out to the provider okay and the provider not necessarily to exist exist at the place where I am. Okay, so the entity has become space independent, and eventually we will make 
entity as a time independent when i say time independent it means that it can be executed at a convenient time at every convenient space okay so it is very simple thing okay we are going towards a data driven world so connectivity becomes a priority okay connectivity of everyone okay so we have an agenda called as internet for everyone okay so project loon obviously most of you would have heard about it right project loon was taking the connectivity or making interconnections of the devices that exist in a remote area using a balloon that can interconnect something like your satellite but on a balloon but unfortunately the project loon was adopted by google and then in 2012 it came into existence by launching some balloons that can that can provide a internet connectivity for a coverable area which cannot be covered by a regular telecommunication infrastructure okay right but unfortunately project loon, loon didn't work out but the idea of project loon has started working out we have very low earth orbiting satellites so this net which appears like a fishing net across the globe every dots there is a satellite every single dot that is in white color blue color all red color everything is a satellite in this and these satellites are not launched long ago long ago these are satellites launched between 2019 2020 and 2021 when the whole world was in pandemic the satellite communication technology was reaching its extreme peak okay even today there might be 20 to 30 satellites 50 60 satellites launched at the very lower earth orbiting satellites okay so we leo is basically very lower earth satellites it's a cluster of satellites a very disciplined uh, discipline moving satellites like a military okay going around the earth at around 100 kilometers above the earth they are not satellites which are sitting at 35000 kilometers something like a satellite which gives you a astro service but these are satellites which are a cluster of satellites which are just 100 kilometers 100 plus kilometers above the earth surface and this satellites are launched to provide internet across the globe so you can see that your internet connectivity becomes independent of space which means that wherever i may be i will be still connected across the globe so if i have a connection obtained from this satellite service provider or internet service provider then i can be anywhere across the globe but still i can connect to everything across the globe okay i'm not talking about everyone across the globe i'm talking about everything across the globe because connectivity is not no more restricted to connectivity of humans or not restricted to connecting people but it is now connectivity of everything when i say everything it includes every single entity across the globe right so when we look into it we are moving in the direction of every services of the economic sector or every economic sector as a function independent of time and space when i say every economic sector it talks about primary sector secondary sector and tertiary sectors so the service sectors already there education is a service sector okay so it is a service that is provided all educational services can be reached and can be uh, the objectives of the education services can be obtained irrespective of time and space independent of time and space you will you can learn at any time comfortable for you and from any way comfortable for you all right so we are moving into a era of x independent of time and space this is the objective of disruptive engineering basically anything should be made available anywhere at any time all right so when i talk about anything that's going to be a very general uh, word so we have a vision element when we talk about connectivity there are a lot of connectivity that is existing but the most 
recent technology or more most advanced technology is basically 5G, the fifth generation, because the fifth generation mobile communication technology is the one which is basically a very unique mobile communication technology, which is completely different from all the four generations which came before it. One to four generation is going to be one was one common standard for all service requirement or for all use cases, whether you are using for a very simple uh, web browsing or whether you are using for your uh, gaming, high speed gaming and high, what do you call, uh, 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 high density video transactions, gaming transactions. Your 4G as a standard architecture, a standard uh, service, a very common service provider for both. But unfortunately, this will not fit for the quality of service required or quality of experience required for every use cases. So the user who is browsing a web can wait for two or three minutes even. All right. So one or, one to two, three or two or three minutes to reach out his mail. But the user who is playing in PUBG every single second is very important for you. I know that. Okay. All right. Beyond that, uh, I was just mentioning the game for, for an entertainment purpose, but beyond that, we are moving into autonomous vehicles. So when I talk about autonomous vehicles, they have to be on the road. They have to sense, right? Everything around it on the road and process everything around it on the road and then control its driving system, right? At a real time within millisecond and microsecond durations is required and a huge data sensing is required huge data processing is required and huge intelligence system is required to control the autonomous cars okay our autonomous driving systems which we are talking about devices okay that's what we call it as industry 4.0 industry 4.0 is towards autonomous um, system development to autonomous operation development or autonomous process development. It can be a complete production line, right? Starting from picking up of a raw material until finishing and testing of the goods, finished goods is going to be autonomous with less human intervention. So we are moving into uh, autonomous system development, autonomous process development and autonomous uh, service developments. Okay, so everything is going to be autonomous with less human intervention. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's what industry 4.0 revolution is. Because when we see industry one revolution as then high productivity, industrial revolution two, also the productivity was very high. But industrial revolution three, which was more of infusing information and technology, after industry three, industry industrial revolution three. The productivity started falling down. Then people thought and thought about what is the root cause because the adoption of the technology was not there. Again, it's all about the scarcity of information and the harvesting of the information and the effective or productive use of the information was not there or the application of the information that is harvested from the system was not there. So industry 4.0 is all about sensing everywhere right so when i when i talking about sensing everywhere everything everything that existing across the world okay so there will be sensing everywhere which means that the surfaces what i see around me will be a sensing surfaces all right so there will be a lot of information that has been sensed okay and it will be processing everywhere. So the sensed information will be processed everywhere in the sense I will not be having a central processing system or a very, uh, what do you call, uh, a centralized processing system. Rather, it will be more of a distributed processing system and more of an edge processing system. Okay. So when I say edge processing, for example, an autonomous vehicle, the intelligence will be at the edge inside the vehicle itself the processing will be at the in at the system itself at the same time 
all the data will be shared globally across as well as so there will be a global processing and there will be a local group processing and as well as there will be a hyper local processing that's what we are talking about okay so we are going to go with sensing at a hyper local level when i say hyper local level even my water bottle will have will be made up of sensing materials which can sense the purpose for which it can it it serves actually and it can create data it can transmit data it can um, what do you call utilize the data and the artificial intelligence or send the data to the intelligence and the intelligence can feed back the data to the physical system for the betterment of the physical system so sensing everywhere is there starting from the hyper local level to the global level so far we are talking only about the global regional and wide level sensing and processing actuating everywhere processing actuating everywhere and data everywhere so when i say data everywhere it's all about data sensing data collection data processing or data cleaning whatever you talk about data cleaning data analysis and after data analysis the analyzed data the outcomes of the analyzed data is fed back to the physical uh, systems such that the longevity the healthiness the performance of the physical system is uh, basically increased so intelligence everywhere so when i say intelligence everywhere it is i when i say everywhere again it is everywhere across the space and at every time across the space so if we basically look at it there is a huge amount of data sensing that is happening data processing that is happening data uh, transfer that is happening and there are data interpretation based on intelligence data interpretation that is happening and the data is going to drive the systems which generates the data again for a better performance for a better longevity for for the better life cycle of that particular entity where the data is sensed and everything okay so actuating data based actuating is there everywhere so when we look at it it's completely a data driven world we are moving into a data driven world okay all right so far engineering is thought about when i say mechanical engineering it's more of machines and everything when i say electrical engineering it's more of circuits when i say electronic engineering it's more of electronic circuits and whenever i talk about telecommunication engineering it's more of putting electronic circuits together and for sending and receiving information so we we usually thought about hardware okay but as we see that data is going to play a critical role in the future engineering process mostly it is going to be data driven engineering designs so all our engineering designs will be data driven and it will be more adaptive more intelligent designs so we are as an engineers we are expected to create an intelligent system so whenever i say an intelligent system it's not only sensing it's not only monitoring but it is harvesting the information sensed information is harvested and processed and the outcomes of the in sensed information is fed back to the physical system such that the performance of the physical systems in all possibilities are enhanced okay so which means that all this are going to be done on real time it is not going to be on a offline or on a very what do you call uh, analytics you are not going to do it on a offline after the working of the system or anything it is going to go hand to hand together all right uh, yes so this is what we are talking about we are planning to create a digital twin of the whole world okay all right so what happened as i said now we have a very good infrastructure for transmitting and receiving informations we have a very good infrastructure for analyzing informations we have a very good infrastructure right for uh, what you call for decision making after analyzing the infrastructure what we call as artificial intelligence and business intelligence ai bi 
CI, decision intelligence, DI, there are a lot of eyes. Okay. So we have a very good infrastructure developed and these infrastructures are going to go hand to hand in every system design. Okay. Every engineering system design is going to be data driven, intelligence driven, and it is going to manage or it's going to be an autonomous system. Right. So that's what we are going to talk about here. Right. So we have talked about data centric. The whole world is going to be driven by data. Right. So these are the top, not, not exclusively, the top 10 technologies of this data driven world. All these technologies, what we are going to talk about, right, is going to be the technology for the next 20 years. And you have to be master of one and a jack of all. Because these technologies are going, not going to be independent of each other. Okay? If I'm going to be a telecommunication engineer who is going to work on 5G and 6G technologies, obviously all these telecommunication systems designed are going to be driven by artificial intelligence. So it is going to be, I need to know artificial intelligence or adopt, I need to know how to adopt AI and as well as business intelligence bi into my telecommunication system for return of investment and for the performance of the system for the performance enhancement of the system all right and obviously while developing the system we all use what we call it as devops which is more commonly used but security comes into play so there is something like devsecops it's going to be the future actually so when i'm a telecommunication engineer I cannot be a very sustainable telecommunication engineer or an engineer of the future if I'm going to concentrate only on the physical layer of telecommunication technology, only, only building the communication systems. Basically, I need to make my communication system more efficient and adoptable, right, for the use cases which my communication system is developed. If I'm going to develop a communication system for the browsing, all right, and if I am going to put that communication system for um, your autonomous system, that's not going to make sense. Okay. If I'm going to develop a communication system for autonomous vehicles or for playing PUBG, and if I'm just going to use the communication systems for uh, what we call a simple web browsing or email transfer, then it is going to be a waste of resources. Okay. So an adequate resource allocation is more required. At the same time, an effective use of the resource also has to be required. Okay, so there is something, uh, um, it can be a trade-off. This cannot be attained. Okay, so obviously I need to go out for an adoptable system and a system development which is more intelligent to know on what is the application that is running on my communication system. So my communication system has to respond to the use that is happening there for which it is used. And it has to provide the performance metrics required for that particular use. So my communication system is going to be intelligent driven. So if I'm going to say I am a very hardware hardcore engineer, then obviously I'm not going to be there in the game for the next 20 years. Right. So obviously, as a communication engineer, eventually I'm forced to learn artificial intelligence. Okay. Right. And I need to know also when I talk about communication inter systems development, a rigid hardware cannot solve the purpose for all the use cases. Right? So there will be minimal hardware systems. So when we talk about any system development, any system development of the future will be of minimal hardware. Any function that can be virtualized, if you are developing a system, any function that can be virtualized, it can be at a global level of virtualization or a very hyper local level of virtualization, because we know everything is a function, right? Everything is a function, whatever we talk about, signal processing is a function, okay? Uh, so everything is a function, sensing is a function, actuating is a function, and fundamentally, uh, when I look at it, um, processing is a function. So every function 
which can be virtualized should be virtualized. What I say is there should be minimal hardware on your design. That is the requirement of the future. Whatever design you are dealing with, whether you are dealing with a mechanical system, whether you are dealing with an electronic system or an electrical system, a minimal hardware, uh, what do you call it? a minimal hardware system design is required. And if there is a possibility of, sorry for this, if there is a possibility of virtualizing the function, you have to virtualize. So it is called as function virtualization, which means that all these functions are moved to a software platform and again software platform it cannot be on a specific so these functions should be virtualized and it will be on a cloud-based architecture so that you have the maximum sharing of resources a global utilization and appropriate uses of resources so a software defined function has to be there and a function virtualization has to be there adopted so which means that i can no more be a very hardcore engineer i can no more be a very hardcore mechanical engineer i can no more be a very hardware based physical layer based uh, what i uh, telecommunication engineer i need to go until the point of application which means that a good knowledge of the information technology a good knowledge of software functionality software separation of functionality is required so Obviously, I see that I need to know software information technology. So it, it means that whatever technology which I'm going to discuss now is going to be interrelated and obviously should be a master of one, which is our your core area. All right. These are not the exclusive, but these are the one which will be more towards the what you call towards the attainment of the data centric engineering designs. Okay. If I say you the investors of these technologies, investors of business in these technologies, you will understand how serious this business is and how uh, progressive these technologies and what is the future of this technology is. All right. So the first technology is basically 5G and 6G because I always talk about this. This is a very foundation. Without connectivity, you cannot have data. The sense data can be there, but the, then sense care data has to go to the processing unit. The processing unit has to be connected to the sensors. So the connectivity is more important and efficient connectivity is required and intelligent connectivity is required. So 6G is more about an intelligent connectivity. So 5G is something like a, a, what you call a neural network and 6G is an, an intelligence added to the neural network of the connecting devices. Okay. So 5G and 6G is the foundation for data transfer and the next technology is basically when, when I talk about uh, the next technology, it is uh, the second one is, uh, I'm sorry for that, okay, Internet of Behaviors, okay. So obviously, uh, we, we were talking about Internet of Things, Internet of everything internet of underwater things okay believe me this is the statistics given by cisco cisco says that there will be 500 billion connected devices by 2030 okay the world population is will be reaching around 8 billion in by 2030 but the connected devices will be 500 billion okay you can now just see how many times it is okay so many connected devices so we are going to talk about massive connectivity of devices that's why we talk about uh, interconnections of everything okay so there will be 500 billion sensing devices that is going to connect it across the globe so my connecting technology has to be very strong all right Okay, security also plays a critical role. So DevOps has developed to uh, the development and operational stage going hand in hand so that the productivity is increased or the development is increased and ensure the quality development. But security is has to be prioritized. So DevOps has evolved as DevSecOps. 
So everything you do, the security entity has to be added. Your device has to be secure at every stage, at a component stage, at a system stage, at an application stage. So the security has to be ensured everywhere. Okay. Intelligent process automation. As I said, we are moving towards autonomous system. Okay. The whole, whatever we talk about, uh, the manufacturing process, the complete manufacturing process, the complete assembly lines are going to be autonomous. So far, we are talking about robotics, but autonomous robotics means that artificial intelligence driven robotic systems. So that's what uh, we are talking about intelligent process, uh, what do you call it? intelligent process IPA, automation or autonomous process, IAP, intelligent autonomous process. Okay, so it is the fusion of artificial intelligence and your robotic, right? So whenever I say artificial intelligence, a huge data is required, huge amount of data is required, and the data has to be processed, and as well as uh, the interpretation of the data has to be fed back as an information to the systems, right? So that comes your data analytics, okay? So business data analytics, or uh, what do you call it? engineering data analytics, or we, we talk about reinforcement learning, basically, right? This artificial intelligence, we, we were not talking about deep learning now. We are talking about reinforcement learning. It means that the intelligence systems learn by itself. You don't need to have a training data. You just something like, I'm new to Malaysia. I just thrown on one day into Malaysia. I start learning about Malaysia by myself with my experiences. So it senses everything around it. It makes a condition that's free knowledge and with the sensed knowledge makes a evaluation and then it starts learning and adaptive learning is there happening eventually and finally the system makes decision based on its adaptive adaptive learning okay so this is what we call it as reinforcement learning okay so you don't need to have a training data you can put the system intelligence system in a new environment and the intelligence system will learn by itself something like uh, it will be a mimic of human intelligence okay Tactile VR, we are talking about AR, VR, XR. Tactile VR is going to be the future where you will be more of, uh, we are talking about seeing, hearing, and as well as learning, but touching sense also has to be there. So we will be having a very tactile VR is going to be the future technology or a data centric technology. Okay? And human augmentation. So far, we are talking about robotics and human helped by robotics, but it is going to be a fusion of human and the machine together. Okay, So this picture most of you have seen as a hand by God and a hand by men. Okay, All right, so now human and robots or machines and human working together means that uh, we will be in the future, a lot of Iron Mans will be there. Thing. All right, everything as a service, whatever you talk about is a service. So you can say anything, everything is a service. Okay. That's what I Function as a service, infrastructure as a service, security as a service, database as a service, which means that when you are going for virtualization of your functions, you are going for virtualization of infrastructures, we are going for software defined infrastructure developments okay for example education infrastructure is now virtualized is now as a service that is provided okay the infrastructure is virtualized your examination also is, is, is given as a service to you to the place where you are so everything database as a service processing as a service any function you are talking is is given as a service to you okay so this is another technology. Everything is as a service. Again, all this is going to be data driven. So these are the. This is the other technology. Cybersecurity plays a critical role. Okay. So we all talk about. This, okay, and there is something called as a virtual dispersive network. Okay, uh, that is one unique approach of a cybersecurity. Okay, but most of us know about blockchain, cybersecurity because quite common. We talk about Bitcoin, right? So. We all know about blockchain security, but virtual dispersive network security. So as I said, at the transmission phase, if you are transacting information, okay, so there can be interception of your transactions, 
So at the transmission space, uh, while transmitting itself, you, you, you ensure that the packet that is transmitted or the data that is transmitted is not intercepted and it is not stolen. Okay. So it is going to be a bursting or a quantum nature of transfer of your information across the network such that your security is maintained. So that's what your cyber security is. I've already talked about artificial intelligence. Okay. Artificial intelligence will evolve as A, B, C, D, E until Z, something like your coronavirus as well. Okay, alpha, beta, they are taking alpha, beta, gamma, and AI is taking B, I, B, A is taking C, I, C, A is taking D, I, decision intelligence, artificial intelligence, business intelligence. Are, are, they claim the intelligence according to the purpose it serves. If the intelligence serves for business, they call it as business intelligence. If the intelligence serves more for your machine running, okay, uh, for your design running, they call it as in a different name. Okay, so intelligence evolves again. So these are the 10 technologies which are used for data transfer, data sensing, data analyzing, data uh, processing your data outcomes and applying your data. So with all these things, we are trying to create a digital twin. So when I say digital twin, basically this is one which senses everything that happens in the globe. This is for a very good purpose of sustainable earth or the sustainable planet right so it senses every activity across the globe processes analyzes and then takes back the information and sends back the information for the performance or for the goodness of this physical earth, physical world at the same time the physical world interacts with the digital world and the digital world interacts with the physical world this is what the objective is we are creating a digital twin of the whole world okay for every single entity you are talking about when i say the world world for every single action that happens in the world okay if you go back and see there are a lot of uh, there are three conferences already happened in 6g i'm sorry i'm always referring to double telecommunication technologies because i'm a telecommunication engineer i always keep track of what is happening with the telecommunication industries and there are uh, three conference already happened for 60. You might be surprised because 5G is still evolving or in the deployment stage. Okay. And the, the surfaces are going to be, every surface is going to be, they have demonstrated a very fantastic sensing surface or a water bottle with the surface sensing basically. So it can sense the quantity of water, the quantity of water you have consumed. It can send in the information and that information can be interpreted and can be sent as an alarm or a reminder to you, the user, or to your doctor or a healthcare system. So a water bottle interacting with healthcare systems and the user of the water bottle as well as. And also, it sends the information to the business class people who are involved in the business of bottling of waters. Okay. So there are information that is sensed serves for multiple purposes distributed across multiple purposes again the ethics comes into picture that's why i say if you are on track to the sustainable development goal okay and if we are talking about security of information the law enforcement has to be brought down not after the occurrence of the act, but at the stage of the act is occurring itself. So the law enforcement has to be implemented on the designed system itself. Okay. So when I'm sending the data, when the system is sending the data itself, it has to ensure the data is securely sent. The data is legal from a legal person or whether it is going to be a fake or a legal information, appropriate information to an appropriate handler, to an appropriate person who is going to be the user of the data. Okay. So the legal or the law enforcement has to be engineered into the system which we are talking about. Okay. So in that way, ethics, privacy, whatever that can be talked is going to be engineered into the system itself. Okay. Of course, there will be law enforcement further, and that law enforcement is all going to be enabled by the artificial intelligence systems. Okay. So if all these systems are going to be worked in coherence to SDG 2030, 
then obviously we are going to go into a world which is going to be very much highly secured and highly protective and uh, in fact a very performance efficient world or a sustainable world for the future okay so the law enforcement will be based on the data itself and it will be embedded into the engineer system as well so that's what we are talking about right so we are talking about um, the technologies which are going to be very much disruptive why i talk about this disruption in the technology is i will make a simple reference of 6g because again i'm a telecom engineer okay excuse me if you are another engineer of other uh, major field okay but you will understand that when i talk about this okay so far i know all of you have studied communication system if you are a communication engineer one funny thing is whatever may be the year i am studying whatever whether i am doing a phd or whether i am doing whatever uh, even a bachelor's first year which talks about the fundamentals of communication engineering communication engineers the very first day of class they see this transmitter receiver and the channel okay so communication engineering is all about this what we talked about okay and it works on some fundamental physics science and laws okay until 5g this is the case but this system is not good enough to serve the future okay when i say not good enough it doesn't mean that the system is going to be obsolete which means that it is not going to serve the purpose appropriately either it is going to be wastage of resource or it is going to be uh, what you call under privilege that is going to be provided or the applications are going to be under privilege if i'm going to optimize the resource so the resource has to be allocated according to the use it serves okay the purpose it serves okay if somebody is going to drink a glass of water providing him a bottle of may lead to wastage of water it's a very simple thing right so a very intelligent driven will provide him a very sufficient amount of water so that's what i'm i'm saying here actually so at a very physical layer i'll be i'm, I'm forced to infuse the intelligence so the machine serves a purpose and all the action that is taken by the machine to serve the purpose and the performance of the purpose or the influence of the machine that is serving the purpose the performance of the purpose is evaluated and then that evaluated result is fed back into the system into the communication system or the system which i developed to serve the purpose so that it can adopt to optimize itself to overcome its shortcomings and to enhance its performances okay so as until 5g even not even 5g yeah? until 5g this system design which was basically dated back to 1960s 19 yeah 19th century has a good validity so whatever i study today as a telecommunication engineer has a good validity until 5g so this technology will be losing its validity when i go for 6g because this technology is going to be a very adaptive technology not only for this simple system design while i'm talking about this one is fit to every electrical system designs which you are talking about it is fit to every electronic system which you are going to talk about okay you are going to talk about adaptive electronic system design adaptive electrical system design adaptive mechanical system design okay injection okay will be more adaptive more autonomous okay so fuel efficiency increment increment of the fuel efficiency driven by artificial intelligence if you are a mechanical if you are an automobile design engineer okay the fuel efficiency if you are talking about in intelligence has to be adopted there for increasing the fuel efficiency fuel consumption or fuel conservation has to be done so you will be infusing it at a system level so whatever we have talked about has to be going to to have an intelligence in its part at a very fundamental or foundational system level so of course i have to be prepared for the future right so that's what i say 
the next 10 years going to be a disruptive engineering because of adoption of this iot artificial intelligence and data analytics so all these new technologies data driving and data driven technologies are going to be adopted in our system de de designs in every system design which we are talking about so obviously i need to prepare myself right we have six years to prepare ourselves to fit into that and to come out as a good computer engineer so if you want to be an ai scientist if you want to be a data scientist if you want to be a good mechanical design engineer or an electrical system design engineer or electronic system design engineer you should infuse these data driving and data driven technologies into your system design and your system design cannot be a rigid system design it has to be adaptive and an intelligent system design so the future is going to be intelligent system designs all right so that's the, that's what we call it as a disruptive engineering technology because it is sometimes maybe disruptive to a very foundational fundamental physics science laws and theories which governs the what you call the operation of this system okay for example so far the encoding function followed a shannon theorem or shannon theory the shannon theory may fail so the shannon theory may lose its validity if i'm going to encode encoding adopt an encoding so here if i'm going to adopt artificial intelligence the fundamental theory or science or law which i'm going to use may or may not have validity okay so we are moving into an era of disruptive engineering and it is at the very highest pace and next six years is going to be completely on a development phase and by 2026 or 2025 we can see the commercialization of these uh, autonomous intelligent driven systems at a component level to a complete system level a very integrated system level so that this is my last slide okay how do i get into my or to be fit for the disruptive engineering technology or a system design which i'm talking about okay it's very simple whatever we have talked about the main focus is on data right it is all about data sensing it is all about data transmission it is all about data analysis it is all about data interpretation it is all about um, data actuation using data and activating your intelligence or applying your intelligence deriving an intelligence from the data and applying your intelligence of the system back to the place where I've sensed the data for optimization of the system. So on a whole, I can say that it is all about data. Okay. When it is all about data, whether it is artificial intelligence or whether it is business, uh, big data analysis, we are no more in big data analysis. If you ask me, we are already moving in the direction of one data or unified data system, one data analysis. For example, very simple example is, we are getting vaccinated, right? When we are vaccinating, we are registering ourselves. Okay. The whole globe is registering its own identity. Okay. You have a global passport, vaccination passport or vaccination certificate, which is accepted globally. So there is going to be a globally available one information about you. Okay. So it is going to be a unified data or a one data that is going to be across the world. And this one data will help us to concise our analysis rather than having a multiple data we are moving from a file filing system to a database management system very simple to say okay so from big data analysis we are moving into a, a direction of one data analysis there will be single data related to every single entity that exists in the world so that's what i believe so again when i talk about one data analysis or a big data analysis or a massive data analysis whatever I talk about, whether it is going to be reinforcement learning or deep learning or anything, it is fundamentally all about mathematics, right? Every intelligence systems designed from the hardware level 
all the way to a supernatural software driven and virtualized level is based on foundational mathematics if you are good in linear algebra if you are good in probability theory and if you are good in statistics and if you are good in your numerical methods okay i always say this if you are want to be a good engineer irrespective of what stream you are in okay you have to be a very good mathematicians you should know how to apply this mathematics to design your system for any purpose for any single purpose which you are designing the system for okay for any uh, for any objective okay so it is all about mathematics and applying the mathematics for system design okay so if you are good at linear algebra if you are good at probability theory and statistics if you are good at numerical methods only well, these four modules is good enough you can fit yourself into any of this trending technologies whatever technology i talk about you can fit yourself into any of this trending technologies if you are good at your mathematics you can be the best data scientist if you know linear algebra data science, science is all about linear algebra probability theory statistics and what you call your numerical methods okay you can be a good physical system design engineer for telecommunication technology again if you know your linear algebra probability theory and statistics and sometimes if you don't have a solution using your fundamental laws and everything you have numerical solutions analyzing the channel effects and everything needs a numerical solutions so if you are good at your mathematics what you study that is good enough that is very much 99% good enough to become an expert of any of these uh, evolving technologies or the technologies of your future okay you should the foundational mathematics and you should know the way of applying this mathematics into the design process which you are involved in okay so that will be good enough okay all right i'm going to the first slide again I'm going to talk about this person okay posh 50th economic forum happened here he is an engineer and he is an economist okay engineers do innovative business that's what i always say engineers are people who who do innovative business you look at any top ceos they are engineers of any top industries leading innovative business industries okay so i i put this man as an example because he is the one who has initiated or who, who who formed was the founder of world economic forum and this world economic forum is now in involved in the great reset initiative an initiative towards a very sustainable world all right so you are engineers and you have to engineer the economics the social and environmental values okay that's the simple job of engineering. all design everything you talk about should have social economical and environmental values that's what expected from the future engineers all right so this is my last slide and this is my last uh, word i conclude with know your mathematics in detail what you study and you can be best technologist okay all these technologies which i have talked about the biggest investors or you name it they are there amazon and tesla are the biggest inverter uh, investors of this satellites with us so these satellites are launched by two giant investors in satellite business one is amazon and other one is tesla right and if you look at all these 10 technologies i i just listed out 10 technologies the biggest investors are amazon google 
Microsoft, Cisco, which where you are dreaming about to end up your career, to begin your career with, not end your career, to begin your career with. Okay. So the biggest investors or biggest technological operators have invested in these technologies. Okay. They want not your degrees, they want skill sets to solve the problems of this fields in this field or especially to make an intelligent system. So with this word, I finish my presentation. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? Any question, guys? All right. I'll wait for a few seconds. Well, all these disruptive technologies be related or based on connectivity of devices. Uh, Adil Khan, thank you so much for this question. Uh, basically, we are moving into a connected world. Okay. So connectivity will play a very critical role. And there is a huge enhancement of connectivity, obviously. Right. So. When you are infusing intelligence to your system, okay, obviously this intelligence has to be fed back to the system which you are designing. The intelligence can be at nearby your system itself, or what we call it as edge intelligence and edge computing and uh, edge cloud facility and everything. Okay, so it can be an edge intelligence. At the same time, this intelligence has to go into a global community for a global. Uh, what you call uh, global integrity of your information that you are designing. Okay, we will be designing a digital twin of every system which is developed. So that that is for sure. So obviously, connectivity will be playing a critical role. And uh, just for you to say, uh, for your information, we have uh, we are moving into a six G communication system which is going to transmit, uh, which is aiming on a transmission of terabits per second at a speed of less than one microsecond duration. OK, so terabits per second, data of terabits per second. And the speed is going to be latency or the transmission uh, delay in transmission is going to be microseconds. Now at 5G, we have a transmission delay of one millisecond. And the data speed is going to be 1 Gbps. That's the maximum data speed which we are talking about. So obviously, it's dependent on connectivity. And at the same time, the connectivity enhancement is there. That's why we have uh, we are looking at small cell architectures, surface intelligent surfaces. Your walls will be, uh, there will be devices or antennas pasted across the walls. So a small cell architectures and edge intelligence will be there. So we are talking about edge intelligence there so connectivity will be, will be playing a critical role at at a very hyper local level that's what i call hyper local level intelligence sensing and everything so connectivity will be there let me get a second question okay can the mass connectivity ensure my security and privacy okay this is a very fantastic question, actually. That's why I said, OK, my security and privacy. So far, we are thinking about security and privacy as an external entity outside the network. OK, so we are trying to build an intelligent system. That's what I'm saying. We are trying to build an intelligent system. So when the data is transferred, that's where uh, your cyber security and uh, everything comes into an entity from the physical layer all the way to the use case or all the way to the application layer. OK, so the security has to be uh, deployed at every level 
and the security and privacy with an artificial intelligence will ensure that your data is secured and it will be transparently giving back your information that where all your data has reached. So the data security and privacy will be embedded into the system that is designed. So the breach of security will be always detected back. Okay. So something like your Bitcoin, the breach of security can be detected back. Okay. Your privacy has to be, uh, is enabled and will be in, ensured because that is one of the sustainable development goal as well. So if you are focused to sustainable development goals on all our system device, then all this has to be addressed. We have six years for this to address, to be addressed. And that's what I was saying. Enforcement of the law inside the autonomous system has to be adopted. Okay. So every law entity has to be enforced at the autonomous system. So every packet data that is transferred, okay, should pass through the law, uh, the intelligence related to law, uh, the, the act, the laws governing the privacy and everything. So if that has do not pass through those intelligence areas, then obviously it will not reach the destination or anything. So in that way, your system itself will govern or automatically or will have an autonomous privacy governing system, okay, privacy governance. But unfortunately or fortunately, there is one, one thing uh, which I still um, not very much care about. But all this going is going to be ultimately governed by human, right? So there is at, at the higher stage, somebody is going to own it. So obviously, ultimately, finally, it is human, you know. So finally, it is human. So that's where, uh, again, uh, inclusiveness of humanity and emotional, ethical behavior of humanity comes into picture. Okay, But the misuse will be detected back. So the misuse of your privacy or the breach of privacy and the misuse of the authority over the governing bodies of the governing bodies will be fed back into the system because the system is going to be autonomous and it is going to be uh, a learning system on its own. So I think the security will be there. That's, that's those are the places where we need to we need to engineer our system design actually. So the law enforcement into the system design is more important. Okay, so I think that's that's the question always happens when we talk about connectivity and uh, mass connectivity, uh, data transfer and anything, anything privacy, personal uh, what do you call it? privacy and personal security is the one. We engineers have to think about how it can be ensured. So that has to be addressed. So we have another six years for addressing all those issues, okay, ethical issues. Thank you, Nabila. So, so another question from Samuel Chi. Will AI be a requirement for all engineering fields in the future? If yes, why? Yes. I, I will always say yes. Very simple reason is this. Okay. For example, uh, it's, it's very simple as this. Um, we honestly to say, we look at uh, optimization of resources. Okay. So this optimization of resources cannot be based on the past statistics. Right. If I'm going to deploy a network, if I'm for example, I'm, I'm trying to deploy a network. Uh, I'm sorry for using again a telecommunication uh, example. If I'm going to deploy a network in uh, some crowded place like uh, near Bukit Bintang. Okay, so that's going to be a very shopping and happening area before two years, right? I need to know what should be the capacity, how much base stations has to be there, what should be the frequency allocation, what should be the bandwidth, what will be the traffic there. Okay, what all I have is the previous statistics. So I'm deploying a network based on my previous statistics, but not necessarily that has to be the status always. Okay, some places which were densely populated on some, sometimes suddenly the population falls down. Okay, so all the resources which have allocated there is going to fail. Actually. So a very, so 
if it is going to be adaptive resource allocation if it is going to be adaptive uh, a very real time based resource allocation and also if i'm going to talk about performance improvement of my system the longevity of it's very simple preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance you you predict your life you predict your uh, machine running all these two things so if i'm going to do a preventive maintenance it is going to lead to me a loss not only in terms of economics okay my system down is there everything is there so preventive maintenance so it is always good to adopt uh, intelligence into your system design so the future system design will have intelligence into it right so yes all system designs including a single circuit design all the way to the complete system design or even a big process design okay a complete education system or a banking system whatever it may be there will be intelligence adopted so that is the future actually thank you for the question and can i have the next question the next question is from Dylan Cho, and the question is, who governs the data that is being collected and processed? Okay, very good. Uh, this is a question which is related to human. That's what I always say. Uh, we talk about cloud, okay? Cloud computing, cloud storage, cloud servers, okay? There is a lot of interesting things about it something like your Google Drive, something like your uh, uh, OneDrive. So every every system or uh, every network design or every functional design is now going to a cloud-based architectures, okay? And finally, when you look at the cloud, the cloud is owned by the giant investors or what you call the giant business leaders okay very simply to say you can name them google amazon uh, apple microsoft cisco these are the people ibm okay these are the people so obviously all your data is there with them okay so as long as they ensure the data security it is their responsibility to ensure the data security that's where the governing bodies, the government comes into existence. So the government has to govern over the data security or the people who owns your, who has your data, okay? Nowadays, you look at it, any app which you are installing, anything which you are installing, you have a big concern form. Unfortunately, we don't read it, okay? They say that your data is secure, okay? So they have to ensure the data security as of now. but. In the future, when I'm going to adopt the security of my system in my system design, any breach in the data security will be sent back to me as an information. So it is going to be a bi-directional uh, security information transfer as well. So even if they breach the security of my data, if my data is going to go to an another person hand, it is not going to happen without my knowledge. As of now, we do not know. Right, we we sign a concern form. Google uses it for its business, okay, because we have already signed it, okay. For example, when you are uh, typing something, searching for something on your uh, uh, Google Chrome, your Lazada next day will be posting all these things. If you are searching for a shoe, your next day your Google Chrome or any of your uh, window will be filled up with Lazada's sale percentage of discount on the shoes which you are searching for other on the sneakers which you are searching for so obviously it is going to some other business data but we have signed for the concern actually we have signed it we have signed the license agreement actually but when i'm going to adopt the security in my system wherever my data goes the information will be fed back to me so that is the transfer transparency which will be there as well so as of now the data is with the giant service providers. That's true. Okay. And I I'm not as a user of their services which they provide. See, if I find if I buy an Android phone, I'm supposed to uh, agree with the conditions. Otherwise, I cannot get into my Android phone. If I buy an iPhone also, I have to agree with the conditions. So if I'm not going to agree with the conditions, 
then my phone is not going to work actually. So those conditions is going to be use of your data. Okay, so your data is money, in fact, to say. So as now the data is there, I may have a less knowledge about where my data is, where how good my data is protected. But in the future, I think those are the issues that will be addressed basically. And that's where the government and the operators has to come into uh, a universal solutions and inclusive solutions for a dignified life of every individual. So your data has to be kept, uh, what do you call, uh, private. Thank you uh, for the question. Is there any other questions? Do you have the next question? Um, the next question is from Omar. What are your views about how ethical is the development of human enhancement technologies to develop human cyborgs? Okay. Um, ethics is a very, uh, what do you call, uh, in fact, uh, I always say this, business ethics and engineering ethics don't go together. Okay. When you um, read the failures of the space shuttle of the past, ultimately it was the conflict between the business ethics and the engineering ethics. The business ethics didn't agree with the engineering ethics and then there was a huge failure of a space shuttle. I don't want to name the shuttle and I don't want to name the incident. But a very simple difference in the ethics between the business and engineering has led to a huge shuttle failure and a loss of life okay so ethics is very significant okay obviously business ethics is very flexible because it looks at the economy but engineering ethics is fundamentally looking into all these three it should be a sustainable ethics okay so it is the developer's responsibility is always we cannot stop the technology growth we cannot say suppose for example uh, when first mobile communication came into existence right uh, from the concept to the model or to the commercial it took 30 years for the first generation mobile communication the concept to mobile communication it was around the concept was around 1940s and the first commercial mobile communication system came into existence in 1980 79 or somewhere so almost 30 years it took it is just because of the fear psychosis and the ethical issues fcc itself the federal communication council itself did not believe in the communication system and you know when, when the commercialization was very successful, people went and asked for more frequencies and everything. The fear of use of frequencies that is transfer electromagnetic waves. When people went and asked for more frequencies, FCC said no more frequencies. Use alternative technologies. Thanks to FCC. That's how you got 2G, which is now going all the way forward to 6G, 5G and 6G. Okay, The evolution happened because of crisis okay so whatever ethical crisis we are thinking about today okay will be alleviated and machines and human has to work together in the future there is no choice for us okay so all the ethical issues will be addressed in fact of course as i said there is always an ethical issues in today's scenario okay one thing is we are very less uh, we are reluctant to changes, honestly to say, and we are reluctant to adopt changes. And always this fear psychosis is because of the fear we have. So ethics is there, ethical issues are there, but eventually that has to go off. Okay. So technology cannot stop any evolution of any technologies. Okay, but the ethical use of technology has to be ensured and that is the responsibility of an engineer who develops it okay 
Rutherford developed atom bomb. He lost his family in the same bomb blast. But his purpose of developing atom bomb is different. Eventually, now we have nuclear bombs which are developed, nuclear weapons which are developed, threatening the life of the whole world. Okay. Ethics. Is there an ethics in that? No. Engineering was there. The purpose of development was there. Nuclear technology is good. Okay. But how we use it is more important. Okay. So the ethics has to be addressed by an engineer and as well as the business community. The business community, which is more on economics part of your engineer design, has to be more responsible. So that's where your operators or your business investors has to be included in your engineering society. So, of course, ethics is always a big question, which will be addressed. I believe which will, that is the question which will be addressed in next six years. That's where the direction which you are moving. Thank you, uh, Omar, for the question. Okay, the next question is from Manchika. So, what are your views on a huge influx of money and time in subjects such as AI and space exploration when the same money could have been used to solve a global famine of poverty? Okay. Okay. Yes. True as well. Okay. Uh, AI and space exploration. I, I always have this question. Okay. Uh, I'm an Indian. Why I say this before I answer this question is India was worried about their mission to Mars, the failure of mission to Mars. They had a big mission to Mars. They said it was a low budgeted mission or anything. But when the pandemic happened, a lot of people died. Uh, if you read uh, daily newspapers, there was an article on Al Jazeera, and there was a paper on Al Jazeera. A mother was lying dead on a platform and a child was pulling a sari, okay, which broke hearts of many. So this pandemic was so much felt in an Indian society. Why I refer to Indian society is, as I was saying, about relative poverty, absolute poverty and extreme poverty. Okay. Extreme poverty exists in two concentrated areas. One is in Nigeria, another one is in India, honestly to say. Okay. Uh, the urbanization was not good enough. Their urbanization in India and Nigeria has ended up in a huge slums. When I say slums, it is an area where there is no enough infrastructures. Okay. Yes, of course. When I talk about global famine and global poverty, it exists in this area. India is investing on space mission. They have gone for a mission to launch their uh, rovers and their satellites and uh, explorers to Mars, and they are working on moon exploration as well. Okay. Unfortunately, poverty is okay in the same area where there are a lot of money spent on those explorations, okay? But the thing is that it's the desire to explore the space is there in everybody, every country's, uh, what do you call the leaders of every country. They want to be the leader of technology. Every country wanted to be the leader of technology. So is India also. They wanted to be the leader and they want to be on the market as well. Okay. Famine and poverty is considered as a social responsibility to be addressed by the same leaders. And the leaders are trying to address it. The way it is addressed is not sufficient enough and good enough. Okay, I always say this. Uh, to end poverty, there are free rations given. The loans, the repayment of the loans are basically uh, what do you call they they, they just uh, say that you don't need to pay back the loans and everything. The repayment has been 
but that is not a proper way of alleviating all this famine and poverty they are taking actions to alleviate famine and poverty but the action taken are not appropriate basically this is what usually the old saying says that when somebody ask you for a fish don't give him a fish teach him how to fish right uh, so if you read the book uh, i forgot the name of the book okay uh, the difference between a poor mindset and a rich mindset he says that don't use paycheck i will not give you i will teach you how to paycheck okay so there is a solution that is provided for reduction of global famine and poverty and it is always pushed to the ngos okay the responsibilities are pushed to the ngos and uh, both has to grow up both has to go i will not say that you you don't need to do a space exploration you don't need to work on your technology advancements to reduce global famine and poverty in fact to say this uh, if you look into uh, the statistics urbanization if you look at all the countries which owns maximum of the wealth are urbanized countries the more the urbanization is the more the happiness index of the country the more the gdp the more the human capital index okay if you look into the global famine or global poverty it is concentrated on only few areas basically okay uh, more concentration is on the few areas and those areas are not urban areas so urbanization is not the people moving into urban urban uh, cities or anything which will lead them in a slum area rather than that urbanization is more of taking or reaching the facilities to the people where they are that's why i am saying always time and it is space independence entities okay take education to the place where they are take healthcare to the place where they are take availability of infrastructure to the place where they are so that's basically a sustainable development goal is going to be okay so obviously there is a money spent into global uh, reduction of global famine and poverty and there is some money spent on ai and space and if you look at it uh, when money spending on global famine and poverty it's more of a government responsibilities and when you, when money spent on technology is more of a private responsibility right and the government is just governing over it okay this private organization as a csr they have a corporate social responsibilities but unfortunately the csr is not going to pump into the government again it is going into uh, parties private parties funds and these private parties funds are not appropriately used for the service of the government the csr is not appropriately used but it is used for something called as uh, fast trading and everything for ugly reasons to stay, stay in power okay so if csr are appropriately pumped into the government funds and they are appropriately used then it is good enough to solve all this global famine and poverty okay those corporates which are pumping money into ai and space exploration or or have the responsibility to pump in a part of money into the csr or what you call into the government for csr but the csr is not appropriately used so the money is flowing in but the money is not utilized appropriately that's what i always see there okay so both has to go hand in hand okay i i will not say that you have to stop technology advancement and take care of people i will not say that uh, don't take care of people go in technology advancement both has to go money is going into that but appropriate utilization of money is not there yet so that has to be addressed actually so it is not that money is not going money is going but not appropriately utilized because again it is the human who is handling it okay i'll be talking politics if i'm going to answer this question but uh, thank you for this question manshika very very touching my it's always a question in my heart as well thank you for this question the so next question is from the legend so will this service become necessities in the future uh yes basically uh, it is um the future is all about 
availability of everything to everybody independent of space and independent of time when i say that everything is available or equality among human beings so that's that's what the future that is aimed at uh, so far the human minds are not matured enough they are greedy uh, we we have seen that okay the kings who are greedy of the the ruler monarchy rules we have seen democracy we have seen uh, what you call communism we have seen capitalism we have seen uh, socialism we have seen completely democracy democracy everything was fine and everything had has its flaws okay if the flaws can be removed off right the, those flaws in all the systems democratic systems communism system capitalism systems if these flaws can be removed off by these technologies by what we talk about data driven generations or data driven eras then obviously uh, the sustainability of the globe can be ensured so this services which we all are, we are talking about is always about sustainable future so obviously that's that's the necessity of the future in fact to say thank you the name the legend is nice be a legend also thank you so much i like this name the legend okay another question from jack is being an engineer as an individual going to be a matter of survival in the future with the rapid advancement of technology and knowledge as there is a competition to be up to date with them okay uh, i always answer with my personal perspective always with, uh, for this question okay i'm not an engineer by my will okay it is uh, i wanted to be a cameraman like every indian who is fascinated by indian movies i was pushed into engineering by my parents but i never knew once an engineer always an engineer and i i started my career as engineering student a backbending student always uh, thinking about holding a camera one day okay but eventually engineering caught up with me and then um, i started learning engineering on my own and the engineering environment is one once when you step into your engineering environment which which i say is the first day of your first year okay it which it will eventually take you into the path of advancement eventually you will walk into it okay you don't need to worry about survival or you don't need to worry about uh enhancing your capabilities or anything do what you are supposed to do today as an engineer eventually you will be growing with the technology that's what i have uh, seen in my past uh, 20 years of life in engineering okay when i study study there was no mobile communication but i i had one teacher who said at that time we don't even know what is optical fibers he said one day you will see optical fiber running into every room of every home it was like a fantasy for me but today i see it he is no more there and what i studied during my bachelor's was no more existing all those technologies was was is obsolete okay i studied telegraphy there is no more telegraphy there okay you have a telegram app there which is named after the telegraphy technology okay but now i teach 5g and 6g okay this one i didn't force myself to learn or force myself to uh, uh, do for my survival or anything eventually when i was walking through my engineering career all this knowledge started coming into me actually so don't need to worry as an engineer it's not a survival of Uh, it's a, not a matter of survival, or it's not. You don't need to push yourself hard to learn the technology to keep your yourself abreast with the industry requirements or anything. Once you step into your engineering career, eventually you will, your your learning will be uh, progressive, and it will be eventually happening with advancements. So you don't need to worry about it. That, that's my personal perspective on engineering career. Actually, thank you, Ravina, for this question. Actually. 
another question from Tazina. Are these technologies more present in developed or developing nations? Okay. The development of technology, there is an investment required for all this technology development, starting from the research phase. Basically, idea, you have an idea. To bring out an idea to a model and to bring out the idea, to commercialize the idea, there is a huge investment required. So, most of the technologies are developed by developed nations and it is adopted or made available to developing nations okay that is the truth uh, but now if you look at it all this process of development is decentralized it has been moved to developing nations as well okay uh, every individual from different nations are are there if you look at it we all know Google belongs to USA, right? And we all know who is the COE of Google, right? He is from India. The investors of the technology development, we are now talking excited about Pixel 6, which is going to be released in October, right? The development of the technology, the investment is from the developed nation side. But if you look at it, if you are man, Human capable of developing the technologies, whether you are from a developed nation or developing nation, doesn't matter. You can lead the technology development. Okay, they have the money. Um, like the world wealth is around four hundred trillion. Okay, thirty percent of the world wealth is with America. Around seventeen or eighteen percent of the world wealth is with China. So almost. 13 plus 18, 50 percent of the world wealth is with China and America, right? So who can invest? One who has the money, right? So most of the investors in the technology will be the developed nations. But people who are developing the technology are independent. They can be from developed nations or developing nations. Okay. So be a part of technology development it means that if you are capable enough of developing a technology then the investors will be interested in you. Okay. So if you're talking about investments, yes, it is from the developing country. But the development of technologies, yes, it is independent of whether it is developed or developing nations. And finally, the technology will be owned by the investors. So all the technologies which are developed will be owned by the investors. That's that's there. Okay. So sure. Have I answered your question? I think I have answered your question. Answered, yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, is this is another question yeah. from Hacker Gaming. Can we see a future of automation where human intervention is not required? Okay. This question will lead to a next question. I under, I know that. Okay. Actually, we are moving into an era of autonomous system design when i say autonomous it is not there is a difference between automation and autonomous automation is more about again the intelligence comes from human autonomous is on its own okay every system will work on its own with less or no intervention of human that's the that's the direction which where we are moving Okay, so the next question, what you will ask is, what about my job? Okay, that's that's a question I will address later. Okay, we are moving into a direction of developing autonomous system, where you don't need to do a repetitive skilled job. Okay, all your repetitive skilled job will be replaced, and the intelligence will be artificial intelligence will be driving this autonomous system. So human intervention will be very less. And if you ask me, we are moving into a direction where it will be zero human intervention. For example, you order a food, okay? You just use your mobile phone. In the kitchen, there is somebody cooking there, okay? And there is somebody taking your, bringing or delivering your food to your home. 
<coughs> all right so there's a connectivity provided they are developing an autonomous kitchen okay where the storing everything is taken by and taken care of an intelligent system and the robotic systems which are driven by intelligent system so autonomous kitchen samsung is doing it okay the good thing about autonomous system is this artificial intelligence can cook a food which is basically directed or the cooking st uh, style or the cooking procedure and the cooking menu selection and everything is basically learned from the best cook of the world got it so the artificial intelligence learns from the best human intelligence and executes without the best human intelligence so this autonomous kitchen can be replacing your kitchen at home soon okay so you just say what the item you want the autonomous kitchen will cook for you and the delivery will be a drone autonomous drone delivery so there is no human involved in it the user of the service provided by the autonomous system okay this is the future because now human is there for delivering human is there for cooking both will be taken off okay because that is a skill job in fact to say a drone which can find its way to your home can deliver it uh, autonomous kitchen or robots which can cook for you based on the instruction that is given by an artificial intelligence can cook the food for you okay machines do things perfectly with less human error that's what we believe until now hopefully the future will be autonomous systems with less or no human intervention so that's what i believe basically Uh, yes. So another question from Jack. Jack. Can engineering in emerging communities help to thrive these communities considering the fast growing outer world and the restriction of these economies to emerging technologies? <coughs> this question is very complex for me. Can engineering in emerging communities help to thrive these communities? considering the fast growing out of the world and the restriction of these economies to emerging technologies. Okay. Uh, basically, this is a very complex question because any, any question that involves human uh, emotion, the affective domain, there are three domains people say, uh, one is the cognitive related to brain, the psychomotor related to your physical actions and affective related to your emotions. So your question, uh, Ravina, is always related to affective domain. Okay, right. Affective domain questions are very difficult to answer. Actually, yes. Um, basically, we are. I, I, I'm always uh, think about talk about talk and uh, reply as a responsible engineer. Okay, it is the responsibility. You see, as of now, all the development of what we are talking about, all the emerging technologies, all the emerging. Uh, what do you call the growing outer world or ultimately developed by the engineering people who engineer these developments okay so it is the responsibility of an engineer who 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 does the growing of these big technologies or emerging technologies to have the inclusiveness of all everybody into these communities Okay, so that's why if you look at um, the projects that are funded, okay, uh, has a component that what is the benefit your technology which you are developing is going to do to the society. They wanted to see explicitly when you are developing a project. So that's explicit mapping of your uh, developments has to be done to all the 17 sustainable development goals that you are talking about. So in that case, when I say, in that case, Obviously, when we talk about all this emerging technologies or growing world is again to enable the development of the community okay? for, the, for the better living conditions of every single life in this world, not only human, but also the life underwater and life on earth. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any other questions? Uh, 
the last question is, do you refer AI as in machine learning or deep learning? Okay. Uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, people don't want it to uh, have a mix of language, actually. Okay. Um, uh, all or when I, when I look into it, okay, intelligence, I, I, I talk about this. Intelligence is related to knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Okay, right? So, if there is no learning, there is no knowledge. All right? Intelligence is going to be the very, very much higher stage of learning. Okay? So, the learning is the first step of intelligence, basically. Okay? So, knowledge comes from learning. So, whatever it may be, machine learning or deep learning is all about getting a knowledge. And AI is more of an understanding is how knowing how to use the knowledge and wisdom is using the knowledge. Okay. Our intelligence is basically using the knowledge to solve a question or to answer a question or to solve a problem. Okay. Uh, maybe a scientific problem or a simple ethical problem or a simple emotional problem or anything. Okay. So A is going to be the application part of your learning section. Okay. All right. So I'm not saying that both are A is machine learning and deep learning. Learning is the first stage of A. A is basically the application part of your learning. So it is maybe I say that knowledge, learning gives you knowledge and then you go all the way up to applying your knowledge, what you call it as the inter intelligence. Okay, so that's the, the that's last the question. question already. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for uh, the questions. The questions are more. Is a feedback for me to say that I have given a good content. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for the opportunities. All right. So thank you all for joining and thank you for your attention. We have reached the end of this tech talk. And please provide us your feedback about this tech talk via the code shown or a link provided in the comment section. And once again, thanks. Let's thank Dr. Shankar for this amazing tech talk and thank you for joining us today.